Hey guys, we're gonna talk about brushing teeth today. So, just like in the video about nails, it's a very similar idea. I need to train the dog to have neutral to positive associations with any of the tools I'm using, which in this case is pretty nice. It's just a toothbrush, it doesn't make a scary noise, um, and it's not sharp. So I find this aspect of brushing teeth a lot easier than doing nails. I have to have the dog okay with me handling their face and their lips and their jaws, so that might be difficult. I need to train the dog to be somewhat still. So for both of my dogs who are on the older, you know, adult age, you know, there's, they're not very fidgety anymore. So it's actually, this is again, something that I kind of get for free with my dogs. But if you have a really young dog, that's something that you might need to work on a lot. So this idea of just, if I have cookies for you, can you just stay in one place for five minutes, right? So this idea of like a five minute duration down sort of thing, you know, settled down is pretty important for this. So when it comes to handling the dog's face, how are you gonna go about it? I'm gonna use food. I have no problem using food. Tonight I'm using Jiminy's. My dogs love these. I like that they are pretty sustainable option as far as dog treats go. Of course, my dogs love their meat, but every once in a while, I try to throw in something that's a little bit more friendly to the planet. So the Jimny's treats are breakable. As you can see, they come about this size, but I break them into about quarters because I'm using small but high value treats with my dogs when it comes to their training time. So what's gonna happen is first, you need your dog to be okay with touching you and specifically touching you with just that one hand. So if you're right-handed, more than likely, you're gonna be brushing with that hand and you're gonna be using your left hand to manipulate your dog's face. And, you know, it's kind of a crutch, honestly, if you start doing this with two hands because you're not gonna actually have two hands when you brush their teeth. So get comfortable with doing it with just one hand. So I'm not holding her head with my other hand or anything like that. I'm just grabbing, you know, the lips. Sit down. Sem is like laying in my lap, like, please give me one. So I'm just grabbing the lips with that one hand because that's all I'm actually gonna have when I actually have to do this with my toothbrush in my other hand. The floppier your dog's jowls are, the easier this probably actually is because their jowls are just looser. Whereas my dogs have kind of pointy faces, so they don't actually have that much extra skin. Um, Wisby has a little more extra skin than Severus and I call, I say it's the boxer in her because she has a small percentage of boxer in her DNA test. So I always joke whenever she has slightly floppy jowls that that's the boxer. Good. So that might take a couple weeks for your dog or a couple days for your dog. I don't know. Everyone's dog's going to be slightly different. Wisby is overall, I would say, a really tolerant dog, even though she definitely doesn't always love being handled. I've never actually had a difficult time handling her when the need arised, right? So when she's had a tick, when she's had scratches, when she had a skin issue, when we first adopted her and we needed to do a lot of examining of her body, I never, I didn't really train her for things like that. Like these were just things that had to happen. I would use treats to get through them, but she never had an issue with me just sort of doing it if I needed to do it. So in a sense, I've been very, very, very fortunate with Wisby. Severus, not so much. He definitely required a little bit more time, but he's also been with me longer. So now, you know, we kind of have a pretty good understanding and a pretty good relationship about, you know, I promise I'm not trying to kill you. Just let me do this and you will get cookies afterwards or it will work out for you in the end and it will all be okay. Okay, so when your dog is comfortable with that, then you can start working on the brushing. So you could do, you know, you could approximate this with your hand first if you think your dog is gonna be weirded out by the toothbrush or if your dog is already triggered by a toothbrush because they've had bad experiences. So you could just go lift, touch, touch, touch with your finger. I mean, you could do that. I, that's a step I personally have skipped over myself, but you could. I don't see why that, it might help for your dog. I think Wisby just thinks it's weird. But if your dog has a big issue with toothbrushing already, then this might be where you want to start before you actually bring in a brush. 
And it'll also help you get used to doing the two hand thing, right? So one hand, the other hand does something else, right? This one's like, that's weird. We've never done that. Why are you doing that? Good girl. Okay. Then it's time to bring in a toothbrush. So for the toothbrush, I use a, ba a children's toothbrush. Honestly, if I could find a, a children's toothbrush with a smaller head, I, I would get that because I actually think this is even kind of big for Severus's mouth. And your approximation of whether you want to start with toothpaste or without toothpaste is up to you. Um, personally, my dogs like the toothpaste, so I actually think with toothpaste is easier for them. They prefer it. So I just put a little bit of toothpaste on, right? And in the beginning, first couple days of training this, you might just do the front half of the mouth. You might not even bother with the back molars. Just start with the little canines. So someone asked me, how do they get the dog to not lick it up? You don't, I think the dog's gonna lick it up. It's also why I don't stress too much about what kind of toothpaste I'm using. Um, I honestly think the toothpaste matters a lot less than the actual like mechanical time you spent brushing with me. So that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I just honestly think like even with a human, right? Like I think that like if you could choose between sloshing toothpaste around your mouth for two minutes every day or brushing your toothpaste with just water, brushing your teeth with just water for two minutes a day, I think the water would be better, right? Like I think it's there's something about the mechanical thing that you need more than necessarily like what the substance is. So I'm not too fussed about the brand of toothpaste as long as the dog is okay with it and likes it. I'm more worried about getting in some time and different angles and some brushing. And then, you know, so you might do that for a couple weeks with your dog first, just the basic easy stuff. And then you might move on to getting the molars. So with the molars, you have this, you know, Grab that cheek back. And honestly, for some dogs, after you get the toothbrush in there, it's probably more comfortable if you don't leave your finger holding the cheek. It allows them to relax that cheek a little bit and you can just keep brushing. And does she try to bite the toothbrush? Not really, I think more than anything, she's trying to lick it, which she can't really, because it's off to the side, um, but you know, if they, she does start to brush bite a little bit, I'm not too fussed about that either. I'm just gonna either remove the toothbrush from her mouth or what I'll even do for Severus sometimes is I'll actually roll the toothbrush in the back of his mouth because it allows me to maybe even get, while he's biting and chomping, it'll allow me to get some of the bottom molars or maybe even the upper part, the inside of the molar, if that makes sense. There we go. So once you get it in there, oftentimes you can just kind of leave it in there while your hand comes out or you can use it to support the dog's head. So not necessarily to hold their head, but I am very cognizant that when I'm putting force into their teeth, as you do need to put a little bit of force into the teeth, that, you know, I'm pushing against her neck essentially and I don't want to make her feel like her neck is going to go snapping the other way. So sometimes I put it on the opposite side just to kind of support the head so it's not wobbling around. Yeah. So just a couple seconds back there and then you can let them lick up the toothpaste at the end as a nice little reward, assuming they like it. Good girl. So a couple of the questions people asked were, what kind of toothpaste? Again, I use whatever I can get. I've used the CET before many times. This is currently what we're going through right now. It's a little bit cheaper per ounce than the CET, which is why I just decided to pick it up from Chewy. Um, some people ask like, how do I get the dog to opt into it? Or how do I even get started with the process? This is how, right? So I desensitize them starting with staying still. Step number one. Step number two, um, you know, handling the face kind of stuff and the cheeks and the jaws. And then step number three, maybe fingers, if you feel like the toothbrush would be too much. Step number four, maybe just one or two teeth, maybe just think like the two canines for the first day or the first couple days, and then slowly building in towards the molars. Um, 
if your dog does not like any toothpaste that you've ever tried, then what I might recommend is that you just use coconut oil instead. My vet has told me that coconut oil um, and a little bit of baking soda makes a perfectly fine at-home toothpaste and most dogs I've met love coconut oil. Uh, how often do I do it? I try to do it every single day. That's kind of a newer thing for me in 2020. Um, in the past, I've tried to like be like, no, I'm gonna do it, and then I kind of fall off the wagon. This is by far the longest I've ever made it. So I started on January 1st, 2020, and I'm still brushing my teeth every single day. And I will have to say that I think it's made a difference. Um, it's one of those things that is not very reinforcing in the short term. like. The first two, three weeks you do it, like you will notice very little difference and that is very discouraging. And so you need to find an other way to reinforce yourself because it might not be shown or apparent on your dog's teeth. What I will say is I have found that by really consistently brushing their teeth, I have found the scaling that I do to be a little bit easier. So when it comes time to scale their teeth, the calcification does I think loosen like you know scrape off a little bit faster than it would if I hadn't been brushing um, so that's one thing but yeah I will say it's not exactly like you're not gonna see a night and day difference just because you did it for a week if that makes sense um, what other things did people ask um, people ask how long I do it so someone asked do I do it for two minutes the way you're kind of supposed to do it for human teeth I'd say it probably takes about two minutes per dog but with human teeth, you know, when you're brushing your own teeth, whoops, sorry. When you're brushing your own teeth, you are there the whole time. Whereas with the dogs, you'll notice that, you know, I'm coming in and out and in and out. I'm taking breaks. I'm letting them lick the toothbrush a little bit. Um, so it's not two minutes total by any means. It's probably closer to like one minute. And I think that's fine. I really only go right now for their canines um, their incisors, so I kind of just like brush over the beginning, the front of their teeth, and then for those upper molars, I find that their bottom molars stay pretty clean. Their bottom incisors, or their bottom incisors and their bottom canines very rarely have issues. Um, so really I'm just focusing on the place where I find the most buildup on my dogs, which is their upper molars. Um, hmm, what else? How do you do it? We cover that. How often do you do it? Every single day? Twice a day, I think, is what people technically, like, vets will, like, recommend. I don't know anyone who actually does it twice a day. That's just ridiculous. Like, it's just a lot, right? The truth be told, I don't always even brush my own teeth twice a day. Um, so, yes. Uh, so, twice a day would be lovely, but I think once a day would be amazing, and as much as you can is good, better than nothing, right? So, even if it was, like, only four times a day, I think that'd be great. Um... You know, how long will it take? It just depends on the dog and kind of their, I think I would say their ability to just stay still is like a pretty big one. And then after that comes, you know, getting really comfortable with having their face handled. And that might just be a couple weeks before you even start to introduce the brush. Uh, use food. There's something wrong with using food, even though it seems counterintuitive for what you're training it for. But in the meantime, use food. And uh, what else? Oh, I do have, I do get people who ask about the scaler. The scaler that I use is a Montana Jack. It was recommended by a friend who is a dentist for humans. Um, I would say before you start scaling, talk to your vet about it. Our vet is comfortable with us doing this with our dogs. Um, she even taught me how to do, she showed me like her little kit of tools and she showed me how you're trying to essentially scrape the hardened, build up away from the gum of the dog. You don't want to scrape it towards the gum because obviously that would be bad. You want to scrape it away from the gum. Um, and she showed me how to, like she kind of demonstrated on her own little, like on her own little like statue thing, um, demo skull thing. And so she kind of showed me how to do that. And she also said that after you do a little session of scaling, you want to follow it up with a polish, right? Because you just like with the doctor, with the dentist for us, like they scrape and then they always polish it afterwards. So the polish she recommended I use was coconut oil mixed with baking soda, which is why I know that that's perfectly fine. Um, so we use this Montana Jack. We don't do it all the time. It's really maybe like once a quarter, maybe once every two months. Um, and for this, I would say 
make sure first that your dog is really comfortable having their teeth brushed because this takes it to a whole new level. When you're using this, I specifically like to have my dogs laying in the recumbent position, meaning not what Wisby is doing, but if her head was sideways on the couch. Um, because when you're scraping, you are gonna, when you're scaling it, you're gonna put some pressure into it. And just having that surface under their face helps. There's no way that I would expect a dog to properly maintain, you know, the strength <laughs> to, to oppose the force that I'm scraping her teeth with. Um, the other thing is, when you're doing stuff like this, your dog has to be comfortable with just a little bit of straight up restraint because uh, opting out is not always a good choice mid situation, if that makes sense. So once this thing is in the mouth, it is very sharp, it's very, very sharp. And so once this thing is in the mouth, I don't want their heads moving at all until I, I remove it away from their mouth. So while this thing, you know, if they start to get a little jerky, it's no big deal. Like at worst, they get poked by a piece of plastic and a little bit of, you know, bristles. If they jerk away while this is in their mouth, they are going to get poked and it's going to hurt. Um, and it's not, and they've definitely been poked by it before, probably, you know, in the cheeks and the gum or something. And it's never been traumatizing for either of my dogs, but it's not something I want to happen very often. So if I'm doing this with my dogs, I will while her, imagine her head is, you know, against the couch. While I'm holding her lips open like this, I am also kind of pressing the head down. Like I'm making sure that she doesn't move. If she chooses to move, I can feel that in my hand and I will, you know, try to stop and then let her go. But she can't just move mid scaling because then she will probably get poked and I don't want that to happen to her. So there is a little bit of the dog having to just be tolerant of a little bit more restraint, if that makes sense. Um, so if your dog can't do it with a toothbrush for, you know, a good amount of weeks first before you feel really like, oh yeah, brushing teeth is not really dramatic for us anymore. We just do it, we get it done and it's fine. I would first do that before you even attempt to work on scaling your dog's teeth. And if you never get to doing this by yourself or your vet just says, no, that's a bad idea. I don't want you to scale your dog's own teeth. Then listen to your vet, right? Um, and just take them in to have their dentals. Our vet seemed to be very supportive of me just trying to get some of that build up out of Seth's teeth on my own because Seth is pretty phobic of the vet. And so I just try to avoid vet appointments if I can do something myself. I've never had the vet clip his toenails. I've never had the vet really do like brush in, take a tick off, anything. Like I do basically everything and I only want the vet to have to do the bare minimum with him. Like, you know, examine him, take his blood, give him his shots and that's about it. Um, so hope this helps. Uh, I hope I answered everyone's questions. If not, I will try to put them in the description of the post. And, uh, yeah, good luck. Hopefully you have fun brushing your dog's teeth. Remember to use food. Be a snack leader, as my shirt says. Um, there's nothing wrong with using the food to train this behavior because it's about providing the dog with a sense of comfort and feedback, right? So while brushing teeth is ultimately about getting the crap out of your dog's teeth, in the meantime, while we're trying to explain to them as best as we can, as efficiently as we can, that we really appreciate how patient they're being, how tolerant they're being of all our handling, and how we really want this to actually be kind of a rewarding experience for them. I think food is probably the fastest and easiest way to communicate those things to your dog. So definitely no problem in using a little bit of food. And then by the time you get to the point where you're using a toothpaste that your dog enjoys, then that becomes kind of the reinforcer. So they get they tolerate a little bit of toothbrushing, then they get to lick the leftover toothpaste. And even if you want to give them as a reward, a little free lick of toothpaste, if that makes sense, why not, right? So if you're kind of going, gosh, I wish there was a way to reinforce my dog at the end of the session of the toothbrushing without the toothpaste, without the toothbrush, you can just put a little bit of toothpaste in your hand or your finger, or um, if your dog is a coconut oil dog, then you could give them a little spoonful of coconut oil maybe, so. There's options definitely for reinforcing that are lickable. Okay guys, hope this helps. Bye.